Uh, we're going to pick back up where we left off. We are in the lecture on the cup of salvation, and this has been um, a very, very delightful experience, to say the least, y'all. I don't know what word I want to use. Um, <laughs> But if you've been following me since the beginning of this lecture, The Cup of Salvation, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. And there's a lot of coming together of other topics and concepts that the author discussed in other lectures in this chapter so far. All right? So one of my favorite uh, things from this lecture is the fact that, quote unquote, those holy mysteries, those holy mysteries of the kingdom of the heavens, those holy mysteries of the kingdom of God, the word holy is derived from the Phoenician, as in we, Moors, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Men and women sprung from the soil, the substance and subject matter of the law. <clears throat> this word holy is derived from the Phoenician word heli, H E L Y, heli. Y'all hear that? Heli, remove the Y, remove, remove the Y and you get hell, H-E-L. Those of you who've been, well, I'll, I'll save that. Now the Greek word, o helios, o, or o helios, is derived from the Phoenician word heli. Okay, so the I and the E make the same sound, right? So you can see the games that they play. They created a fake nation called Greece. And they came up with a whole language and vocabulary, along with the lexicon. Okay, to, to what, why? To give you evidence that there really was a nation of Greece. Hey, do y'all see it? <clears throat> So, O Helios, O, apostrophe, capital H, E L, I, O S. So, you'll note that if you delete the O prefix to Helios and delete the O S termination, which is the O S suffix, you're left with. Heli, H-E-L-I, hidden from you, yet in plain sight. So you don't need the uh, the uh, Greek termination O-S. You don't need that. And what do they all mean? S-U-N, the S-U-N sun. So those sun mysteries those holy mysteries of the kingdom of the heavens, those sun mysteries of the kingdom of the heavens, which is the vernal equinox, the spring equinox, okay? As the sun continues to ascend, the number of daylight hours are greater than the number of nighttime hours all the way past the harvest, until September 21, 22, thereabout, is the autumn equinox. So this is the royal arc from Aries to Virgo or Libra. This is the kingdom of the heavens. So these are the mysteries of the kingdom of the heavens, the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And Christ, the S-U-N Son is Christ, at the summer solstice, which is June 21, 22. Everybody see that, which is the higher self. Okay? Hence, when you die and go to heaven, y'all see it? 
Hence, when you die and go to heaven, you're going to be with Christ in paradise or in the kingdom of the heaven. But you must be a good Christian. Y'all see the parallel? So let's take this further. And then this is going to be the, going to be the end of the review. <clears throat> So our Phoenician ancestors, our words, our words, sword, words, anagram, our words, our Phoenician ancestors, the great Moabites, Canaanites, Hittites, etc., 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 up into the Moors, all one bloodline, all, all sprung from the soil and the substance and subject matter of the law. All are manifestations of thought. The land made manifest from thought. So, man and one man having its origin in the ether, manifesting on the earth plane through the soil. Hence from the word heli, H-E-L-Y, comes the English word health, H-E-A-L-T-H. So H-E, delete the vowel A, L, delete the T-H termination, you get health. And healing, H-E-L, I-N-G, H-E, delete the A, you get H-E-L, delete the I-N-G, you get L again. Okay, y'all? Or you can do it this way. H-E, delete the A, L-I, delete the N-G, you get heli. And of course, ill, which is heal, the heal, of a man or woman's foot, it is also the eel, the fish or the snake, you know, the sea snake that possesses the capacity to generate and emit a powerful electric shock, electromagnetism. The sun is electromagnetism. The heel, the H-E-E-L of a man's or a woman's foot is connected to the soul of the foot, S-O-L-E. Latin, soul, S-O-L, means the sun. Heli, H-E-L-Y, means the S-U-N, sun also. So the heel and the soul both are the S-U-N Son, as is the word holy, H-O-L-Y, the Son. What does that tell you, scholar? What does that tell you? It does not tell you worship the Son, if that's what you're thinking. That's not what it tells you. Let's continue. The human family. Now, human is a complicated word. Q man or the colored man, the colorable man. Q man. I remember back in the 80s and 90s, this notion of a man with you, human, in metaphysical circles was a big deal. But we know now that the human is a contracted is a contracted version of Han Uman, the half man, half ape created creature by Yaku. <clears throat> by Yaku. This is the Neanderthal. This is the Paleolithic being that was created by Yaku. And I'm talking about the Yaku that the nation of Islam made popular, or at least brought to the tent, to the attention of most of us. I I found out about Yaqub in the 70s or 80s, 
because my uh, my mother's husband, my stepfather, um, he was a black Muslim. So I I uh, I got to go to the mosque and listen to uh, to the uh, cassette tapes. So I learned, yeah, you know, I learned a little bit. Okay, I learned a little bit, <clears throat> even as a little boy. So let's continue. So whenever you see human, it's a good idea to think Han Uman, H-A-N, U-M-A-N, H, delete the A and the N, and what's left is H-U-M-A-N, human. Man with hue or, in law, colorable man, a fake man, a symbolicum of a man, having not the substance, meaning that this knockoff created creature from Genesis chapter 1, which is an amorphodite in its beginning, looks like a man on the outside, but does not have the substance. It is not sprung from the soil. It's not autochthonous. It is not the substance and subject matter of the law. It is a stateless creature. It cannot inherit land. Y'all see it? Look up the meaning of monster in your law dictionary. I'm sorry, look up the meaning of human. It'll tell you that it is a monster. All right, it'll give you the definition. It's not what you think it is. <clears throat> look up the meaning of land in your law dictionary. Land is synonymous with more, M-O-O-R. So it's a well-established principle in law that land is the substance and subject matter of the law, that mores are the substance and subject matter of the law. That's why the substance from the Constitution, mores, have been removed or denationalized and reclassified as Indians, Blacks, Mulattoes, color, you name it. And gold and silver have been demonetized to remove the substance from the Constitution so that corporations through trusts can own land. All right, y'all? Or at least that's the way they construe it. I'm getting this information right here from, from the trust handbook. Yeah, it's pretty loud, uh, Nanty, but it's the best I can do. And if you don't like it, if you think it's funny, go somewhere else. Okay, if you don't have something, and I'm not speaking to you only, Pretty Loud, uh, Nanty rather, but if you don't have something to say that adds to the conversation, don't say anything. Because this is not the place for mockery and humor. If you don't like it, go somewhere else. Or, if you don't like it, put your money where your mouth is, send in a donation to pay for a studio. Otherwise, shut up. The human family, the Han Umans, the Neanderthal, the Paleolithic troglodyte nigger. You must get this correct in your mind so that you see, so that you see the image, so that you see the image that the word represents. In other words, you must couple your eyes back to your mind. You must break the spell that Christ put on you. I speak to them in parables. I speak to them in connotative linguistics. Yes, goodbye, Nat uh, Natty. Goodbye, don't come back. I speak to them in connotative linguistics so that although having eyes to see, they cannot perceive. And this is the methodology to break that spell so that having eyes to see, you will perceive. Scholars, do you understand what the Spirit is saying to you? And I'm not saying I'm the Spirit. I'm reminding you. Although I am Dr. Yasapa in the flesh, 
speaking to you with my own frequency, but of the same consciousness that is you. You being tuned in, receiving and transmitting on your own personal frequency. I am you and you are me. And none of this is mine. So don't think I'm telling you that I'm the spirit. In your religious frame of mind, I'm not telling you that. Although I am. And let me hit you with this. Although I am. And you are too. The Holy Spirit. Why? Because you have feminine mental energy according to the Hermetic Laws. The feminine mental energy is most closely represented by the subconscious mind. That is your physical energy. That is the becoming. That is the creative aspect of you. Y'all got it? So in commercial circles, y'all call it manifesting. In other words, in other words, you need to get the thought past your conscious mind through different meditative or distractive exercises or techniques to distract the conscious mind so that the thought goes into the subconscious mind and when the thought is accepted by the subconscious mind, which is, hermetically speaking, feminine mental energy, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will then take that thought and then create it in your reality, out of natural processes. You have nothing to do with it, other than, other than through the great I am, which is your masculine mental energy. The IV that never changes in contradistinction to the Holy Spirit, which is always changing, which is always creating. Your physical body grows and it deteriorates. Your mind grows and it deteriorates. Am I right, y'all? This is represented in the zodiac as light and darkness. This is the Maserat, the Zoan. Lower self, higher self. Okay? So, the great I am is the father. Thought. Thought. Mental, mental gender. It has nothing to do with sex or sexual organs. It's just energy. For example, negative and positive energy. For example, electricity. You look at a battery, there's a negative and a positive. That's all I'm talking about. That's all the, not me, but the hermetic laws are talking about. Okay, and, and then of course, you are the S-U-N sun and the S-O-N sun. All inside of you. There's a miniature S-U-N sun inside of you which is remixed into the S-O-N Son. So yes, you are the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit. So in other words, you are God in your life. And you are eternal. You always, you always was, you always will be, and you are now. Okay, and you, God resurrects himself. Do you understand what the Spirit is saying to you? That's what I'm talking about, y'all. Okay, y'all got it? So we are on page 230. <clears throat> we just dealt with the heel, H-E-L, H-E-E-L, the heel of the foot and the sole of the shoe, okay, the heel, the sun, the heel of the shoe or of your foot, right? And then the sole, S-O-L-E, 
sole of the foot, S-O-L, soul, as in S-U-N, sun. And then here we are on page 231. So let's read. As everything depends upon having a right understanding, so the psalmist prays to God to forgive him the inequity of his heel. What y'all should know right now, as soon as you heard that, inequity is an abstract concept derived from the Maserat, the ecliptic, the apparent path of the sun, the old path that the prophet told you to return to. Is that clear? So, at the vernal equinox and at the fall equinox, we are provided by the SUN sun, even days and nights. Even days and nights. 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night. That's, abstractly speaking, equality and equity. That is justice, that is righteousness. Okay? That's what it is. So as the number of daylight hours increase, obviously the number of nighttime hours decrease, right? But there's only 24 hours in a day. So that is unevenness, that is inequity, that is inequality, that is injustice in the abstract. So now, y'all, here, remember, this is the royal ark. This is the kingdom of the heavens, okay? September 29 is the opening of the gates of hell, which is the half circle, okay? Y'all got it? So this is the winter months from October 1, the winter months all the way to March, say, 1920. Okay, y'all? So here we are at the equinoxes. So now... This is inequity. This is inequity. This is inequity. This is equity. Okay, y'all? This is what the author is talking about. The psalmist prays to God, to Zeus, to forgive him the inequity of his heels, of the sun, the unevenness of the daylight hours compared to the nighttime hours. Pure astrology do you have eyes to see and perceive and ears to hear and understand or are you still cast under the spell radicals rights right on brother islam and shalawama radicals much appreciated okay scholars so we're dear we are dealing squarely with nature and hence your church and chapel arrangements of the paraphernalia in these heli, H-E-L-Y, mysteries in these heli, H-E-L-Y, mysteries, heli, meaning the S-U and Son, coming from our ancient beloved ancestors, the Moabites, Canaanites, Hittites, etc., and also our Moorish ancestors, in that order. In these heli mysteries, in these holy mysteries, or mysteries of the S-U-N Son, have been always those of a camera obscura. They don't want you to see it. It's like having the camera out of focus. That's what the author said. Or astronomical ori. Exhibiting and shadowy types upon that table. Remember the sacramental table, y'all? On the east side of the wall, the sun rises on the east, sets on the west. Remember that? The sacraments on the table. There's a window. Modern times, there's stained glass. Those places that didn't have access to stained glass, they painted the windows. Before they painted the windows, they put up ivy. Ivy wine to shade it, to, 
to provide shading. One reason was so that the sunlight wouldn't break down the wine. Why? Because the god Bacchus, the god Bacchus loves wine. Bacchus also loves getting drunk, partying, and orgies. And orgies. So y'all think Bacchus was straight, homosexual, or bisexual? All you need to do is take a look at what they're doing now. That'll tell you what was happening in ancient times. Ain't nothing changed. Let's continue. <clears throat> Let's continue. The actual phenomena of the heavenly bodies, look y'all. So that whole sacramental table being shaded, look what it says. The actual phenomena of the heavenly bodies. So they're doing nothing but mimicking, mimicking, reflecting. You look up in the sky at night, it's dark. They're mimicking what happens celestially. Space is dark at night. As observed by those astronomical priests. Now y'all tell me, tell me, you've been taught, you've been taught that priests throughout ancient times was a clique of dudes worshiping some deity. But that's made up. These priests, rather, were professors. These priests were scientists, professional, career scientists and engineers who observed, who observed the celestial bodies and natural phenomena. They observed it, studied it, and sought ways to use it. And they recorded their works. And they recorded their works and their findings. They were top-notch scientists who, who have been hidden from you. A mask has been put over the truth about them and they have been called priests. Why? To push the religious paradigm to push the abstract paradigm, to keep you in bondage, to keep you detached from nature, which makes you stupid. Y'all think about it. Anybody who does anything that goes against nature is an idiot. Complete idiot. And I'm not, I'm not being nasty. Or what? Out of his mind. Because everyone knows you cannot fly without equipment. You, you go out here, you see a grown man or woman trying to fly. What are you going to think? You're going to think they're out of their minds or high. Right? It's no different. When people are rhythmic, harmonic with nature, and they take a look at someone who's living in the land of Oz, who's living in the religious paradigm, they are clearly an idiot. Let's continue. From the priest episcopal observatories, what is that y'all? That's an astronomical observatory. That's why the Catholic Church has observatories. What are they doing? Why do they have observatories? Which are now called bishops see or outlooks now isn't it interesting the holy see s-e-e -E, the bishops sees s-e-e-s -E -E astronomical observatories astronomical lookouts what are they looking for what are they looking for and better yet why don't they want you to know that they are looking at the celestial bodies that they are observing. See, to observe is part of science. It is a core, it is a fundamental aspect 
of scientific research, observation. In fact, if you cannot observe it, you cannot say it's real. That's how fundamental it is. Why don't they want you to know that they observe that they are observing and why? <laughs> and why are you not observing? There's nothing to prevent you. Other than, of course, your training. Right? Other than your training. You think it doesn't matter and it doesn't relate to you. Why? Because religion, belief, what the deity is going to do and what you need to do for the deity, who's just an imaginary boogeyman, does not exist. That's all you're concerned about through your training. And I'm saying you, meaning collectively we as a people, through our indoctrination, y'all. So don't take anything I'm saying personally against you. Unless, of course, you know, when something stings and it hurts, it's usually because, <laughs> well, I don't have to say, right? Obvious. But the Holy Seed, S-E-E, -E, the Holy Seed. See, science is good. There's nothing wrong with astronomy or astrology. But there are bad paleoliths, bad moors, wicked and evil. So what matters is the character who has that knowledge. That's who's going to make it bad or good. And they're just downright wicked. <laughs> Okay, y'all? So it's not the science. Nature is nature is beautiful. Nature is wonderful. Nature is you. And nature is I. But it's the character of those who possess this knowledge that can use it or who do use it in a very bad or negative way. Y'all follow me? Anyway, let's continue. So make the connection. The bishops see the holy see and astronomy, astrology. Make the connection and the S-U-N sun. So why are, they, why are they observing it? Well, clearly they're seeking a benefit. They are clearly seeking a benefit. How to, how to harness that energy to increase their power and control. But you can do the same because it's yours. Not only is it is it yours, but it is you. It is you. Take some time to figure this out. You are the universe. Y'all work on that. The bishops always being upon the lookout. The bishops being always upon the lookout. The bishops sees, S-E-S-S. -S. The Pope's power is the Holy See. The Pope's authority, Maritime Admiralty Law, the C-S-E-A, the Dogon O'Annies, the mermaids, corporations, Capricorn, duplicity and deceit, Pisces, intentional deceits, Decepticons. Are y'all putting two and two together? And if you are in a religion or even in the religious frame of mind, meaning that meaning that you're still you're still influenced by religious beliefs, religious doctrines, well guess what? You're still under the jurisdiction of the Dogon, the jurisdiction of the world of the dead, O Annie, the Holy See, Maritime Admiral, Catholic, Canon, Christian, corporate policy, jurisdiction, okay y'all? You're in a civilly dead state. Anyway, let's keep going.
And you have the very earliest rule laid down for the building of a church or chapel, y'all. Listen, in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5. So here, here's the earliest rule in the New Testament, of course, for the building of a church. Quote, C, S-E-E, -E, well, you already should relate that to the bishop's seat or to the bishop's lookout. You should relate that to what? Where are you going to build your astronomical observation center? See, saith he, that thou maketh all things according to the pattern shown to thee in the mount. Astrological. And see, sirs, how accurately is that heavenly pattern copied in the arrangements of this holy or heavenly table, rather. Y'all see that? The heavenly table, the table of the sacraments, is built according to what? The pattern showed in the heavens. See, saith he, to make all things, including the sacramental table and the sacraments on it, according to the pattern showed to thee in the mountain, the bishop see what you see in the cosmos, the zodiac. Clear? <clears throat> the table must stand in the east. So here it is, y'all. Here's what you see. The table must stand in the east, as it does in the churches. And this portion of scripture, which I have read, appointed to be read for the epistle, must be read by the priest standing on the south side of that table. It would have been blasphemy against the Healy spirit, the Healy gust rather, the H-E-E-L-Y-G-U-S-T. So, Healy gust is the Holy Ghost reflecting or a remix of the natural phenomena of what? The spring gusts of wind or the, the winds that blow in the spring. Okay, y'all? And where is the sun? Where is the sun in Aries? The temple of God. Okay, the temple of God. To have read, to have read it on the north side, it is the gospel and not the epistle that is to be read on the north side of the table. Y'all got that? The epistle is to be read on the south side of the table and the gospel on the north. Because for what reason? That your clergy, your pimps, your pushers, your gangsters, that's right, y'all, I'm calling the religious clergy gangsters and pimps, poverty pimps, gangsters, two-faced liars. For what reason that your clergy, that your pimps can give you None at all. So in other words, your clergy is not going to tell you why you have to read on the north or the south side. They're not going to tell you that. But look at their book with your eyes open in the 48th Psalm. And you have the because. Well, here's the because given to you in the 48th Psalm. Quote, upon the north side lieth the city of the great king. Well, that's why you read the Gospels on the north side. Because in the 48th Psalms, it said, upon the north side lieth the city of the great king. God is well known in her palaces. Has a sure refuge. Uh-oh, y'all. Can y'all see it? 
God is well known in her palaces as a sure refuge, end quote. Northward, northward of the equator, I hope scholars that this is uh, becoming repetitive to you. If it's becoming repetitive to you, it means that you are remembering. It's been committed to memory because it's all repetitive, okay? It's all repetitive. The concepts are repetitive. The parables change, but the concepts do not change. Let's continue. Northward, uh, northward of the equator stand the mansions of the S-U-N sun. In his or in the sun's reign through the summer months, beginning with March and ending with September. That's the royal arc, y'all. So Aries, the sun is ascending and ascending. June 21, 22, it's the summer solstice. The sun is now called the Christ. From June 21, 22 to June 25, it appears as though the sun is moving horizontally, but still casting a shadow on the sundial. And from June 25, the sun begins to descend, it begins to fall all the way into the fall equinox. So this now is Virgo or Libra, depending on the era of time. Because remember y'all, the scales of justice, the scales of righteousness, were at one time a part of a Virgo constellation, if I remember correctly. Okay, y'all? So this is the royal arc, the summer months, all right? So March 21, all the way until October 1, or the end of September, September 30th. This is the kingdom of the heavens, kingdom of God. Y'all got it? The summer months, I believe it's seven. The mysteries of the kingdom of the heavens. The mysteries of the heavens. Let's go back, y'all. Well, so where am I? Ah, northward of the equator, stands the mansions of the sun. So what did JC say? In my father's house, there are many mansions. In my father's abode, there are many mansions. In space, there are many constellations. There are 12 arranged in a belt. The Maserat, the Zoad, those 12 constellations make the zodiac. Okay, so the zodiac signs from Aries all the way to, well, from March to the end of September, this is the zodiac signs of the kingdom of the kingdom of the heavens. Okay, that's all he's saying. Nothing more than that. Okay, all right. So in the sun's reign, through the summer months, there's seven, beginning with March and ending with September, September 30th. But southward of the equator, so that would be October, that would be the beginning of the winter months, but southward of the equator, as you see in this delineation, stands the cup of salvation. Now, y'all, if y'all remember, this is the, uh, this is the celestial equator. Okay, this is the fall equinox. This, we're going to say that this is the cup of salvation. So the cup of salvation is a little bit below the celestial equator and a little bit under the line. Okay, so that when the great harvest comes, when let's say you, for example, are standing in the vat as the, as the person making the wine, you're in a vintage shop, you're crushing the flesh of the grapes, the wine will do what? Spill off into the cup of salvation. And then the deity, the deity loves wine just as much as you do. 
and wine warmeth the soul. Does it not? In the winter months, you drink some wine, wine makes you feel warm. There you are. That's the astrological solution. Let's continue. As you see in the delineation, uh, stands the cup of salvation. I just showed you that. And I, whom they brand as the devil's chaplain, for which I forgive them, and whom they seek to put me in prison, for which the devil forgive them for me. Now, what are we learning here? What are we seeing? That just like Christ said, just like Christ said, whatever they do to him, they're going to do to you too. You're not above your master. So the Gospels are telling us that when these devils, these lower self devils, see your light shining, in other words, see you harmonic with nature, see you harmonic with nature, they see you shining, they don't want to have nothing to do with you. In fact, they want to hurt you. Why? Well, some of them feel like you're, upsta you're upstaging them. Others, they just don't want a good, kind-hearted, honest person around them. Because you might tell. You might tell on the dirt that they're doing. So you are, in their eyes, a problem waiting to happen because you talk too much. You can't keep a secret or you're not going to go along to get along. And just like Christ's own people, as the story goes, said, kill them. They preferred Barabbas, a known criminal, a known felon, your own people will do the same to you. A student is not greater than his master. This is what the author is demonstrating to us through his own life. Read the sketch of the author at the beginning of this book if you want to know more about the author's biography. So, scholars, do not expect, do not expect people to support you. Or let me, let me rephrase that. Do not expect the masses to support you. No, you should expect that what they did to Christ, they will attempt to do to you too. So therefore, plan accordingly. Plan accordingly and take steps to outsmart them. Okay? Because you already know what's going to happen. Now let's continue. Am not only the most faithful. So the author is speaking about himself. He's saying, I am not only the most faithful minister of the gospel. You ever heard in your lives, but the most orthodox. And I agree with the author 100%. You cannot be a faithful minister of the gospel. You cannot love Christ and preach that Christ was a man who literally walked on the planet, who, who inhaled and exhaled air, who has a biography, and who died upon a cross. You are an unfaithful witness, a good-for-nothing man, if you're teaching that and you know it's not true. But if you are telling the truth, and the truth is that Christ is the S-U-N Son, and that the Gospels are an allegorical story, originally penned by the ancient Coptic Egyptians to hide, to preserve, through code and allegory, the astronomical universe. Why? Because the Catholics and their Moorish minions wanted to destroy 
and eliminate that knowledge from the public forever and forever, ever, ever. And to replace it with religious doctrine so that they can control you by controlling your mind. So therefore our ancient ancestors wrote allegorical stories that were encoded. Twelve apostles being the twelve, zo the 12 zodiac signs. J.C. the Christ figure being the S.U.N. sun. And so on and so on and so on. Only people who are preaching the truth, the astral theology, and that the Most High's commandments are natural law, they, and I include myself in this, are the only true and faithful ministers of the gospel and the most orthodox. Let's continue at the bottom of page 231. And in reading this portion of scripture appointed for the epistle with my foot standing on the south side of the table, I say with the psalmist in the 26th Psalm, quote, my foot standeth right. I will praise the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, in the congregations. Of course, congregations, when you see that, you should know that that is the zodiac signs, right? That is the S-U and sun, my foot. Remember foot, soul, I'm sorry, heel, the heel of the foot, and the soul, right? The heel, H-E-E-L, and the soul, uh, S-O-L-E, heel as in hilly, soul as in the Latin, S-O-L, sun. That is the sun in the congregations or group of stars that constitute the respective signs of the zodiac. My foot, what is the foot composed of? The heel and the soul. My heel and soul, my foot standeth right. I will praise the Lord in the congregation purely astrological or purely uh, astronomy. Y'all see it? Clear as day, right, y'all? Clear as day. And, and, were you, uh, were you dying with thirst, you might never take the sacramental cup. And were you dying with thirst, you might never take the sacramental cup before you had taken the sacramental bread because and here's the because Ceres this is the deity Ceres C-E-R-E-S now y'all know Ceres another name for Ceres is Virgo Ceres comes before Bacchus B-A-C-C-H-U-S the deity Bacchus the mother of her S-O-N son. So Virgo, the mother of Bacchus, Ceres, the mother of Bacchus, comes before her S-O-N son. The lady before the gentleman, of course, right? You open the door for the lady. You pull the chair for the lady. The lady is first, right? The corn harvest, Virgo is holding the sheath of corn in her hand. The corn harvest before the vintage. The corn harvest before the wine making season. The wheat of August before the grapes of September, y'all. If I got that, the wine, the, 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 the wine at the, what do they call it in the religion I used to be in? The memorial, right? On the table they have the wine and they have the unleavened bread. Okay, y'all, the wine again is not blood, it's not human blood, it's not even symbolic of human blood. The astronomical solution is that it is grape juice. Okay, or wine. 
The vintage means the grape juice has, the sweet grape juice has been made into wine. And the bread is the wheat or the corn, right? The bread that you make from wheat or corn. Telling you that we're dealing with September, uh, August and September. Okay, the harvest. Okay, page 232, continue. A, and of the latter, and of the later end of September too, that is, not till Michael Mass Day, the day of the Archangel Michael, who holds up the Ark of Heavens. Y'all remember, this is the vernal equinox, spring equinox, right? Then the summer solstice, and now we go down to Virgo or October. And here's Michael Mass standing at the foot, standing at the foot of the royal ark, holding up the royal ark. This is Hercules. Y'all know the muscle-bound Greek deity? Holding up, hi there, holding up the kingdom of the heavens. All right, y'all, holding up the royal ark. This is what he's talking about. So there we find Michael the archangel who holds up the ark of heaven on the 29th of September. So y'all remember that. The 29th of September is Michael the Archangel Day. Michael in mythology is Hercules. He's at the foot of the Ark of Heavens holding it up. Okay? So there's Michael the Archangel on the 29th of September with the scales in his hands with the scales, the scales of justice in his hand, the 29th of September being the day of judgment. The 29th of September being the day of judgment, y'all. The last day for gathering in of the last fruits of the cultivation of the earth. Y'all got that? It's the last day. September 29th. Of which the allegorical ap uh, apostle admonishes the farmers, the gardeners, and the vine dressers that on the day of judgment, the S-U-N son will render every man according to his agricultural industry. In other words, in other words, if you were lazy, and you didn't plant your harvest? Well, you're gonna starve through the winter or you're gonna be out robbing and stealing or begging. If, if you did the work to have a bountiful harvest, well, you're gonna get that, right? You're gonna get it. Okay, y'all? That's the judgment. If you didn't do it, you're gonna be judged. If you did do it, you will be judged. You're gonna get what you deserve. Okay? That, that's also to say that if you fail to do something, well, you're gonna get that too. What are we talking about, y'all? We're talking about the law of cause and effect. The hermetic law of cause and effect. The hermetic law of cause and effect. Every effect has a cause. You don't have a harvest, or you don't have enough, or your harvest was terrible, whatever. That effect is due to a cause. This is the hermetic law of cause and effect. So on that day, on September 29, the day of judgment, the S-U-N son will render every man according to his works according to his agricultural industry, and quote, and whatso whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. This is the hermetic law of cause and effect. Every cause creates an effect, and every effect is due to a cause. And everything, y'all, 
is a result of laws. Everything is a result of law. And the necessity of being accurate as to the precise day, that is, you know, you need to know September 29 precisely. You must be a what? A good timekeeper. A good timekeeper. A good timekeeper. Did y'all hear that? So if you're not, if you're not, if you don't possess the skills to keep time, whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You're going to catch hell. Nature's going to spank you. Y'all see it? Y'all, does everyone see it? Okay, let's continue. And the necessity, the necessity, see, it's not maybe I will, maybe I won't. And the necessity, every man and every woman must have this skill in himself at the top of the mind, not at the back of the mind, at the top of the mind. Otherwise, we'll be continue to be in the position where we are in now. We need to go to the grocery store. We need to go to our open enemies to get sustenance and clothing because we don't have the skill to tell time. You need to know how to tell time in order to know when to do what and how to do it, right, y'all? For example, like a farmer's almanac. You need to know when to plant and what to plant, which plants grow best and what kind of soil, etc., etc., etc. And the necessity of being an accurate, and I'm sorry, let me repeat that. And the necessity of being accurate as to the precise day, that is, the day of judgment, or of the SUN suns coming to the line of the equator. How are we going to measure that, y'all? How are we going to measure it? This is where St. Andrews comes in. What's the tool called? The gynometer. You need to measure it at 12 noon. That's one or two lectures ago in this book. Okay? So you get that story about St. Andrew. Oh, hold on. Somewhere around page 217. Okay? Somewhere around page 217, 216. 218, something, something like that. All right, y'all. Let's come, let's get back to it. Uh, okay, so the sun is coming to the line of the equator. So now y'all know the sun is falling. The sun is falling. It will fall below the celestial equator. Hence, Christ is crucified. And you see his mother Mary standing at the base of the cross. Why? Why? Well, because Christ is crucified and Virgo is here. Virgo is his mother Mary. So there are two crucifixions. So the autumn crucifixion is taking place in Egypt in the Garden of Gethsemane. The vernal equinox crucifixion is on Mount Calvary with the skull, skull place. Mary is not in that art depiction. Okay, Mary is on the other side of the kingdom of the heavens. Okay, y'all? Virgo is on the other side of the royal ark, as it were. Now let's continue. <clears throat> Alright, or of the S-U-N sun coming to the land, coming to the line of the equator at the autumn equinox, that is, the day of the covenant. Y'all got that? That is the day of the covenant. 
was beautifully indicated in the astronomical theorem theorem as distinguished from theory theorem is a proven fact a theory is a guess y'all got that? the day of judgment which is the day the sun of the sun's coming to the line of the celestial equator at the autumn equinox that is or which means the day of the covenant the covenant of grace and we moors sprung from the soil are ascendant into the covenant of grace on the earth plane in other words we are the creditors we are the creditors. We are the people in the preamble of the Constitution for the United States of North America. We are the substance and subject matter of the law. We are thought made manifest from the soil. We enter into the earth plane as the rightful heirs in the covenant of grace. But our ancestors gave up their birthright for disgusting desires to be fulfilled. And Yakub, Yakub and his experimentations that resulted in the Neanderthal and the hybrid troglodyte niggers is a perfect example of that. But man can regain his vast and glorious a uh, uh, vast estate but let's go to see what the astronomer Job has to say all right so the so as beautifully indicated in the astrological theorem of the 31st chapter of Job quote I have made a covenant with mine eyes why then should I look upon a maid now, y'all, you should know who is the maid. What's the astrological solution to this mythological maid? Virgo. Virgo. In mythology, Ceres, C-E-R-E-S. I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? Wait a minute, y'all. He made a covenant with his eyes. That sounds like a man saying, well, I'm not going to look at these beautiful women, right? I'm going to try to be focused. I don't want to get involved in adultery or fornication. I'm going to look the other way. I made a covenant with my eyes. I promised myself I'm not going to look at these women. Or the women might say, I'm not going to look at these men's. <laughs> As my mother and sister used to say, these men's and men's. Is. <laughs> I tell y'all, you know what? One of the things I really miss about being back home in Morocco, I really miss the uh, the dialect of English. I don't want to call it Ebonics because that's uh, uh, disgraceful or belligerent. <laughs> but y'all know what I'm talking about. I, I, I miss that. On my mother's, my mother, well, we come from the south on my mother's side. And south and then way, way south. All right. And I'll leave that, I'll leave that ambiguous. But let's continue. Where are we? Ah, so going back to the great uh, astronomer Job, he writes here. Where am I, y'all? Ah, okay, all right. So, okay, so quote unquote, this is the 31st Psalm. I have made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think, why should I think upon a maid? Why should I think? Why should I reflect? Why should I desire a maid, right? When you look at something, you gain a desire for it. 
You become curious, interested in it. Y'all got it? Now let's continue. Let's work it out. That is in the astronomical solution. Well, here's what that verse means. Quote, this is not a quote, but here's what it means astrologically. This is the natural phenomena. I have ascertained by astronomical observation. That's science. That's not magic. That's not religion. That's not hocus pocus. That's not evil. That's not spiritism. I have ascertained by astronomical observation. If you religious people are saying that that's evil, put your cell phone down, throw away your laptop, throw away your refrigerator, throw away all technology. The car that you love so much, throw it away, give it away. I bet you you won't. I bet you you won't. Because, well, let me, let me leave that alone. I have ascertained by astronomical observation that the covenant or the coming of the SUN sun to the point of the autumn equinox takes place in the scales of September, the scales of justice, the scales of righteousness, and is therefore not to be anticipated or looked for in the Virgin of August. In other words, I have observed the skies, I've, I've observed the celestial bodies for years, for years, and after years of observing, and I've done the calculations myself with my gynometer. I went out there at 12 o'clock, right? I'm a great timekeeper. I mastered all the skills. And I found out through my observation and experimentation that when the sun crosses exactly when it reaches the line of the autumn equinox, the constellation that I see in the sky are the scales of justice. The scales of justice were eventually called Libra or library. No magic, no hocus pocus. Science. And I'm emphasizing science so that you scholars can break the spell. So that you can come out of this enchanted state of mind. And this fear of astronomy astrology. It is as much science as that cell phone and automobile you love so much. Huh? All right. So it's happening in the scales of justice in library. I don't need to look at Virgo. I don't need to look at Virgo because I know where to look. Right, the sun will be at the line of the celestial equator in the scales of justice or in library, Libra. So I'm not gonna waste my time looking for the autumn equinox in August. Y'all got it? I'm a great timekeeper. In August, I'm gonna focus on collecting all my harvest. Y'all got it? I'm a great timekeeper. So, let's say thanks to Job. All right, let's continue. All right, next paragraph. So when the vir so when the virgin mother in the marriage of Cana in Galilee complains to her son, listen y'all, now we're following up. As a matter of fact, let me go back to the last sentence in the paragraph so this can be clear and congruent to possible newcomers. Let me read this again. In the 31st of Job, quote, I have made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? That is, in the astronomical solution, I have ascertained by astronomical observation that the covenant or the coming of the SUN sun to the point of the autumn equinox takes place in the scales of September and is therefore not to be anticipated or looked for in the Virgin of August. 
that's Virgo in August. So, when the virgin mother in the marriage at Cana in Galilee complains to her S-O-N son, that's Jesus the Christ figure, the Bacchus of the gospel, the Bacchus, B-A-C-C-H-U-S, look that up, y'all, so you can see some pictures and get some uh, further research on it. So when the Virgin Mary complains to her son, Bacchus, who is Jesus Christ in the gospel, that, quote, they have no wine, end quote. And y'all, isn't this the first miracle, if I remember correctly, in the gospel that J.C. performs? She, that is Mary, receives that astronomical rebuke, quote, Woman, what have I to do with thee? End quote. Nope. Let me repeat that. Quote, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. End quote. So y'all look at that along with Job chapter 31 that we just read, okay? Woman, what do I have to do with you? My hour has not come yet. We're in the scales of justice in September. Christ doesn't get crucified yet. No. Let's continue. Let's let the author speak. Of which the astronomical solution is, quote, the time for making wine is not in August. Woman, what do I have to do with you? Job says, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look at a woman, not to look at Virgo, not to go looking for the autumn equinox in September. Y'all got that? I'm sorry, not to go looking for the autumn equinox in August, which is Virgo. Woman, what do I have to do with you? My time has not come yet. It's August. My time is in September, the time for making wine. First is the bread, the wheat or corn harvest, August. And September is the wine. Does everyone see the astrological solution? Let me say it again. Quote. Woman, says J.C. the Christ figure, who is Bacchus, what have I have to do with you? Mine hour is not yet come, end quote, of which the astronomical solution is, quote, that the time for making wine is not in August, but at the latter end of September, end quote. And there were set, there, Six water pots of stone. Six water pots of stone. After the manner of the purifying of the Jews. After the manner of the purifying of the Jews, that is, or which means literally of, quote unquote, the firing of the, I, let me, let me show you all this. Iodioi. I'm sure I did not pronounce that right. The spelling is I-O-U hyphen D-A-I hyphen O-I. Which means the, the S-U-N sun's beginning end of his solar fire into the six signs of the summer months. Okay, so the six water pots the six water pots that were referred to represents August, etc., all the way up until, I'm sorry, not August, but March, each of the months of the summer, right? All the way up until August. So there's six. September is the seventh. Y'all got it? Which represents the SUN sun's bringing in of his solar fire into the six signs of the summer months, during which men must be content to drink water. 
because the time for turning water into wine is not till the latter end of September. Just as the SUN sun is at the gate going out, or just at the moment going out of the heavenly Jerusalem. Now y'all scholars, you should remember that what did the deity say? What did the deity say? Let's look at page 228. Psalms 87, quote, The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. The Lord loves the gates of Zion. The scales of justice, library Libra, more than all other zodiac signs. That is, or which means, more than all other signs of the zodiac, which are the mansions of the SUN sun, the dwellings of Jack hyphen Ob, that is, or which means, of God the Father, of whom says the Christ of the Gospels, quote unquote, in my Father's house are many mansions. Now we know that that's a poor translation. The better translation is, in my father's abode, in space, there are many mansions. In space, there are many zodiac signs. There are 12 zodiac signs arranged in a circle or belt, the Maserat de Zoad. And there are 48 in total, according to our ancient ancestors, which I roll with. Okay, y'all, is that clear? So that's page, that's the bottom of page 228 and then the top of page 229. Is it clear? So where are we, y'all? Give me one moment. Well, I hope y'all are um, getting something out of this. You know, I really do. I hope y'all are learning. Okay, so here we go, y'all. Here we go. Huh, let me show you the word. So take a look at that word. So I O U hyphen D A I hyphen is that O I? Can y'all see it? Where my fingers are? So that's page 232. One, two. Third paragraph down a little bit toward the bottom on the left hand side, on the left hand column. All right. So these six pots of water represents the six months of the summer months starting with March going until August and of course September is not included because September is the end of September is the time to make wine and of course the wine in religion represents Christ dying on the cross shedding his precious blood okay and he JC the Christ figure being given grapes uh, not grace, but uh, given uh, vinegar to drink, representing that after September 29, you cannot use the grapes for anything else but vinegar. So Christ was given vinegar. That's the astrological solution. All right, y'all? Now let's continue. So during the summer months, you, you, you have to drink water. Because the time to make wine is not until the end of September. Okay, y'all? And that makes sense, doesn't it? Because maybe everyone ran out of wine. Because they had to go the whole winter. And then they went through spring. And y'all know the springtime come and you just came out of winter. People want to party and have fun. Okay? So by the time summer comes, everybody out of stock. 
<laughs> okay, yo. Let, so let's let's pick it back up. Where are we? Ah, okay. So the epistolar to the Hebrews, this is the last paragraph on page 332. The epistolar to the Hebrews still more accurately fixes the very day of the vintage, day of winemaking, vintage, by reminding us in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12, that quote unquote, Jesus, that he might sanctify the people with his blood suffered without the gate. What gate? The gate of Zion. The Lord's favorite zodiac sign, right? That is the day immediately after the S-U-N sons having crossed the equator. Who's there? Uh, Michael the Archangel. Michael Mass Day, September 29. Uh, Michael the Archangel standing at the foot of the ark of the heavens right standing at the foot of the autumn equinox carrying the ark autumn Equ or carrying the royal ark on his shoulders okay y'all so that is the day immediately after the sun sons having crossed the equator okay christ is crucified right this is the Christ crucified in, in August with Mary standing at the base of the cross, in honor of which, quote, suffering without the gate, end quote. Our most orthodox Christian altarpieces represent Christ, not as directly upon the cross, but as taken down from the cross. Okay, y'all? So the day after... Christ is crucified, he's taken off the cross. This is very orthodox. This is the most orthodox you can get. Okay? Now, where stands the virgin mother of the Son of God in your Gospels, but by the cross of Christ? Y'all see it? And where stands the virgin of the Zodiac? but by the cross which the S-U-N son makes over the line of the equator at the autumn equinox. And here have you the whole story of that marriage of Cana. And old is this arrangement of stars, let me repeat that, as old as this arrangement of the starry heavens Ascending up to a date, not of hundreds merely, but of thousands of years before the pretended, before the pretended imaginary era of the birth of your Christian Christ. Y'all got that? Clear. Christ gets crucified. They give him vinegar to drink, remixing the end of the of the vintage season in late September. After which the grapes become sour. Anything you press out of them will become sour. That's vinegar. And on, at the bottom of page 232, it reads. It reads in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12, that quote unquote, Jesus, that he might sanctify the people with his blood, suffered without the gate. That is, or which means, the day immediately after the SUN sons having crossed the equator, that means immediately or the day after J.C. was crucified in honor of which, quote, suffering without the gate, end quote, our most orthodox Christian altarpieces represent Christ, 
not as directly upon the cross, but as taken down from the cross. There you have it, the astrological solution. The footnote reads where it says gates here. The footnote on page 232, there's a footnote for an asterisk for gate, a footnote it says here, the Mount Calvary of the earthly Jerusalem is very unfortunately within the gate in the center of the city. Y'all got that? The Mount Calvary of the earthly Jerusalem is very unfortunately within the gate in the center of the city. So he's not talking about an earthly Jerusalem. It has to be what? The physical, the physical autumn equinox in the heavens. In other words, the astronomy, the concrete position of Virgo, Libra, etc. It's talking about the natural phenomena. And of course, you should know by now, if you've been following my work, Jerusalem, according to the scriptures, was destroyed. It was a burning waste, uninhabitable. So none of the gospel stories could have taken place in Jerusalem. It's all a fairy tale. Okay, y'all? Page 233. Here is the old maid herself, as fond of a drop of the crater, so the old maid herself likes wine too, as any of us, with her head, as you see, running on nothing but the crater, which she has just been smiling. She turns away her head in disgust because she finds it empty. Yeah, where the, where, where the heck the wine at? She get mad and go tell her son so he can make some. <laughs> okay? She turns away her head in disgust because she finds it empty and with her outstretched arm in which is the bright star Bindi Matrix. This is Virgo, y'all. Virgo is uh, JC's mother Mary. That is to say, indicator of the approaching vintage. She seems, uh, she seems in the act of saying they have no wine. All right, you look up in the, you look up into the heavens, you see Virgo in her arm, the bright star of Indy Matrix, somewhere near the horizon, you see it. So that's how you know, that's how you know that the season for making wine is near. Remixed, that natural phenomena remixed in the gospel story is Mary, the mother of Jesus, telling Jesus they have no wine. They have no wine. Jesus says, my time has not come yet. You look up, the physical phenomena is, you look up, into the sky, you see the constellation Virgo. You see Bindi Matrix in her, her arm, the bright star Bindi Matrix. You know, you know that the season to make wine is near, just a couple weeks, right? Just a couple weeks and you'll be able to make, you'll be able to turn that water into wine. All right, you must be an accurate timekeeper. You must know the times and seasons. Okay, if you don't know that when you look up, if you don't know which uh, constellations are, are, is Virgo when you look up, how are you gonna know the Bindi Matrix? You look up in the sky, you see the Bindi Matrix at the horizon. Well, okay, well now you know. Now you know, autumn equinox will be here very soon and we can start making wine. The grape harvest is coming. We can start making wine. The crater, the crater, the crater will be right underneath the autumn equinox in a couple weeks. All right, let's prepare to make this wine 
to turn this wine, this water into wine. All right, y'all, y'all got it. So are y'all are y'all learning? Are, are you learning? Are you enjoying this? More importantly, are you learning? Can you can you do something with this knowledge, y'all? Absolutely, you can. If you don't know how yet, think about it. You'll figure a way out. This knowledge will break you free, will break the spells, will break those God spells, those Zeus spells, that bewilderment and enchantment and bewitched state of mind that you have. And observe now the positions of the heavenly bodies at the moment when the stars in that outstretched arm Peer above the edge of the horizon due east by north. Okay, now y'all correlate that with page 231, where you have to read the scriptures. Okay, you read the scripture uh, on the north side or the south side. Remember that? So make your correlation. So where are we? And then read off the text, which I have read to you from sacred writ, from sacred writ. So we should know the writs we write are sacred, right y'all? Whatever you say can and will be used against you. Which means that whatever your enemy says about you doesn't mean anything. The only thing that means something is what you say. And the writ is sacred, therefore you must know. You must know and understand the content in your writs. It must be your own because it is you. You must be competent. We must be competent, right? To take back the birthright according to the treaty. Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1836, right, y'all? The 50-year mandate that the Prophet Noble Drew, Drew Ali uh, talked about and that was returned to him, okay? So let's continue. Also, the Constitution for the United States of North America, uh, for North America, and, and our five principles, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. So who are the lords of the ascendant? Who are the lords of the Ascendant, the capital L-O-R-D-S? Who are they? Who are the lords of the Ascendant at that moment? At that moment, y'all, when Virgo is at the horizon and the beautiful bright star of Vindi Matrix is visible in, the, in due east by north. For who say this quote that cometh from Edom with dry garments from Basra treadeth the winepress alone and of the people there is none with him. He by himself. This came from Edom. They are the children Castor and Pollux. Gemini the twins of the zodiac. Y'all got that? Children that will not lie. So this is the theme scripture of this chapter, y'all. That quote is taken from Isaiah chapter 63, verse 1 through 8. All right? Gemini. The zodiac sign Gemini. In mythology, Castor and Pollux. So y'all see the history? The Gospel Busters are, the Gospel Busters are, etymology, philology, I'm gonna include all of these, okay? Etymology, philology, uh, grammar rules, linguistics, all of that one. Science, which is the astronomy, astrology, 
Okay. And then finally, history, secular as well as mythological or mythology. Everybody see it? This is all knowledge, not religion. This is science. And linguistics is a natural law. Who are those lords of the ascendant? Why, they are Castor and Pollux. Gemini, the twins of the zodiac, quote unquote, children that will not lie. And the only children that ever answered to the definition, that's children who wouldn't lie, sure indicators by their ascendancy in the zenith of the rising up of this outstretched arm of the Lord, which will bring on the day of vengeance. This is all astrological. Look up in the skies at the position of these celestial bodies. You will see this. It's not religious at all. It's positions of the heavenly bodies. All right. So let's, uh, I lost my spot. And the only children that ever, that ever answer to the definition, sure indicators, sure signs by their ascendancy in the zenith. So they're rising up to the zenith, right? The high point. Which will bring on the day of vengeance. That is the day of vine, Gents, the day of winemaking, the day of vintage, the day of vengeance. Y'all see how they play with you with words? Or of treading and trampling down the grapes in the wine press, called the agony in the garden of Gethsemane. That's in Egypt, y'all. Remember, we read that. This is the crucifixion in Egypt. I believe it's in Revelation chapter 21. Y'all go check it. It's in the devil's pulpit, maybe one or two. It's in the lecture about the crucifixion of Christ. One lecture before this one, okay? All right. So the wine press season or the vintage season, the day of vengeance, all of those synonymous terms is called the agony, A-G-O-N-Y. There's a footnote, I'm gonna come back to it. The agony in the Garden of Gethsemane when the declining S-U-N sun, when the declining S-U-N sun, when the falling S-U-N sun, where is it falling? It's falling toward the autumn or fall equinox. When the declining sun sweats his blood out when the declining, when the falling S-U-N sun sweats his blood out into the cup of salvation. Y'all remember I did this, I showed this, uh, here's the, here's the uh, celestial equ uh, equator. This is the autumn equinox. This is the uh, crater, the cup of salvation. Okay, it's below, slightly below the celestial equator and a little bit under. So the day of vengeance, which is literally the day of vine tinge, the, the, the time of the wine making season. Okay? The grapes are in the wine press, and let's say you get in there and you start crushing the grapes. All right? And the wine, the blood of the wine, the blood of the grapes rather, will ooze out into the cup of salvation, which is the crater. And that happens in late September. So the sun is falling, the sun is de declining. Christ is crucified. Right, y'all? And then one day, that's not 24 hours, y'all. One day, not, 20, not a 24 hour day, one day after Christ is crucified, what happens, y'all? As we read on page 213, I'm sorry, page 232, it says this. In Hebrews 
chapter 8, verse 12, that quote unquote, Jesus, that he might sanctify the people with his blood, suffered without the gate. That's remember, that's the next day after he's crucified. Without the gate, the footnote reads, the Mount Calvary of the earthly Jerusalem is, very unfortunately, within the gate. But JC, this verse says he is without the gate. Okay, now let's continue. That is, or which means, the day immediately after the sun having crossed the equator, in honor of which, quote unquote, suffering without the gate, end quote, our most orthodox Christians, Altarpieces represent Christ not as directly upon the cross, but as taken down from the cross. There you have it. Okay, there you have it. Now let's continue. Third paragraph down, page 232. Okay, so so the, the, the wine press, the day of vengeance, is the time for making wine it's called agony the footnote reads in agony a-g-o-n-y literally is a wine press in agony really is a wine press this is in 1831 so y'all go check it its application to a state of human suffering is metaphorical so who is this coming from Eden? Let me read this, y'all. It's metaphorical. Y'all put the, you Hebrew Israelites, you Hebrew Israelites, listen to this. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that spake, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, not from human blood, but from grape juice. And thy garments like him that treadeth in the winepress, that treadeth in the agony. When the day of vengeance. The season for making wine, which is late September. I'm going to stop there. Let's keep going. Vengeance, avenger, vindication are technical to the business of the venter or winemaker. That's the footnote on page 233. So you Hebrew Israelites... You need to rethink what you're saying in terms of the interpretation of the verses that we just read. Because that has to do with making wine. That is purely astrological. And I'm intentionally not citing any specific prophecy about the destruction of Edom. Because I don't want to get into that. There are many. But what does not change is the truth, and the truth is, in agony, literally, is a wine press. Its application to a state of human, of Han Uman, suffering is metaphorical. Vengeance, avenger, the avenger of blood, avenger, vindication are all technical are all technical terms are technical to the business of the venter are technical to the business of the winemaker I'm just giving you the truth I'm just giving you the truth purely astrological purely astrological and here you are hoping in a deity that you can't see that you have no indication that exists other than that you're indoctrinated to believe that and you're hoping for this deity 
to come execute vengeance on Edom. Unbeknownst to you that vengeance is winemaking. Vindication is winemaking. See? You should see a picture in your brain of a wine press and the process of wine being made in late September. But you see a picture of a God coming with the sword, with blood all over his clothes, because he has been L, uh, a G N I L L I K backward Edomites. Okay? So you have been cursed. You have eyes to see, but you cannot perceive the light that's coming into your eyes. Your mind does not perceive it. What you should perceive is a wine press. The wine press or the, the, the wine making process in late September. That's what you should see, that image. But you see a man with a sword with red eyes, with blood all over his clothes, killing Edomites. Okay, y'all? You've been cursed. Christ cursed you. And you hear the same thing in your, in your sermons, in your camps, and assemblies, and churches. Okay? So you got ears to hear, but you don't understand anything. Okay, is it clear? Y'all see how that works? Okay, let's continue. All right. So they are the children, Castor and Polox, Gemini, the twins of the Zodiac, quote unquote, children that do not lie. And the only children that ever answer to the definition, children who don't lie, sure indicators, sure signs by their ascendancy in the zenith, so they are in the zenith, they have ascended, that's in the northern part of space, right, y'all? In the zodiac. In the Maserat, rather. Of the rising up of this outstretched arm of the Lord, which will bring on the day of vengeance, which will bring on the day of winemaking. The day of vengeance, the, the day of vintage, V-I-N-E-T-A-G-E. -E. That is of V-I-N-E hyphen G-E-A-N-C-E -E, or of treading and trampling down the grapes in the wine press called the agony. In the garden of Gethsemane, when the declining sun, S-U-N sun, when the falling S-U-N sun sweats his blood out into the cup of salvation that day always being the day of the sun's position in the equator in the line of the celestial equator as the S-U-N sun comes to that position every autumn quote unquote the point of the autumn equinox being as you see parallel with that of the vernal equinox. Vernal equinox, autumn equinox. Parallel, opposite ends of the same line. Opposite ends of the same line. Therefore, the hermetic law of what? Polarity. All right? So the point, quote unquote, the point of the autumn equinox being, as you see, parallel with that of the vernal equinox. The arc angel Michael from y'all Bibles or the genius of Michael Mass Day has his name of Michael has his name of Michael which signifies equal with God y'all remember we went over that maybe two one or two lectures ago Michael Michael signifies equal with God and Jesus, that just one, as he is called by the first martyr, 
St. Stephen, the Corona, Septim, Sept, uh, Septentrillianus, something like that, y'all. Let me see if I can pronounce this. Septen, I don't, let me show it to you. September. Well, this is the constellation Corona. And you can see it in September. Y'all see it, my fingers? Is it in focus? This is on page 234. Septen. How do you pronounce this? Septentrionalis. I don't know. Okay? Quince position you see is immediately over the scales of justice. So here's the corona. Let's say here, here are the scales of justice. Let's say, uh, let's say the spoon is the scales of justice and here is the corona. Okay, this is, this is the corona. This is Saint Step in the corona. Sept, sept, septentry on Alice. So in other words, you see the corona, the constellation corona over the scales of justice in when? September. Most likely late September. Okay, now let's see. Whose position you see is immediately over the scales of, of justice? Okay, so that's Libra, y'all. And Enoch, that just man who was translated and quote unquote was not because God, because Zeus, because Odin took him, end quote. That is the S-U-N son entering into the constellation by his brighter effulgence, that's brightness, okay, his shine, rendered the stars which constitute this constellation invisible. And Noah, that is Noki, I got a brother named Noki. <laughs> My brother's name is Noki. Okay, Noah, that is Noki. My son used to call him. Well, anyway, Noah, that is or which means Noki, N-O-C-K hyphen E-E. -E. I got a brother named Noki and Pookie, y'all. Noki and Pookie. Noah, which means Noki, N-O-C-K hyphen E-E. -E. I was closest to my brother Noki. He's a real good guy. Enoch written backwards. Uh-oh, y'all. Enoch written backwards. That just man, notwithstanding his getting so gloriously drunk, are both said to walk with God. Well, I wouldn't be surprised because God, according to the story, is Bacchus, and Bacchus likes to drink and party and have orgies. I got, I got, I, I, give me one second, y'all. This says Noki spelled backwards, or I need to check. Give me one second, y'all. Enoch written backwards. Enoch written backwards would be H C H. C O N Conky. Hmm. If y'all see this, put it in the comment section. Let me read this again. By his brothers, by his brighter effluent uh, uh, effulgence, rendered the stars which constitute this constellation invisible. And Noah, that is Noki, N-O-C-K hyphen E-E, -E, Enoch, written backwards. Enoch written, so Noki, Enoch written backwards, E-E-C-K. Written backwards, that just man. Hold on, y'all. And Enoch, that just man, 
who was translated and was not because God took him, that is the S.U.N. son, entering into the constellation by his brighter affluence, rendered the stars, which constitute this constellation, invisible. So we're talking about, hold on y'all. The point of the autumn equinox being, as you see, parallel with this, which signifies equal to God and Jesus, that just one, as he is called by the first martyr, St. Thomas, the coroner Saturnia, whose position you see is immediately over the scales of justice. And Enoch, that just man, was translated and was not because God took him. That is, yes, you and son entering into this congregation. But Okay, so... Uh, so the sons, the brilliance of the sun, of the S-U-N sun, the sunshine is so bright that you cannot see the corona Saturnalia because the sun is too bright, okay? It's, it's outshining the constellation corona Saturnalia. But that's not what I'm looking for. That is the S-U-N sun entering into the constellation. That is the S-U-N sun entering into the constellation. So the sun is entering into the constellation Libra. Libra begins in September, right, y'all? By his brighter effulgence rendered the stars, which constitute this constellation, so that would be Corona Septim, uh, Sep, uh, Septernalis, uh, invisible. And Noah, that is Noki. Enoch, so Enoch, so Noah is Noki, Noki is Enoch. Enoch is that just man, right? So Enoch, Enoch written backwards, that just man. So it would be H-C-O-N-E, H-H-C, H-C-O-N-E. I'll come back to it. I don't. I, I don't see it at, at the moment. Written backwards, that just man, notwithstanding his getting so gloriously drunk. Yeah, I'm gonna have to come back to that, y'all. Next paragraph. But how could any man walk with God with their infinite, indescript, and indescribable God? Right? Their incomprehensible and infinite space filling God when their God their Zeus cannot walk himself why to be sure he would be at his journey's end before he set out absolutely right because this uh, God is supposed to be everywhere at the same time so how is he going to walk somewhere when he's already there? So how can someone walk with him? This is the author's logic. Why, to be sure, he would be at his journey's end. He would be where he's trying to go before he even started out. Because why? He's everywhere. So how are you going to walk with him? Okay? And as his space fills all space, he must sit still in all space like a gouty old man in his armchair and stay at home throughout all eternity. <laughs> I never thought about it that way. So what the author is saying, the author is saying is that if, if this God is everywhere, that means he can't go anywhere because he's already everywhere. So he has nothing to do but sit down like an old man because he's everywhere. Uh, that's funny. So there's a footnote. It says, in the indictment. So I guess, so that's the citation for that. So y'all go to the citation if you want more. So the author in the next paragraph says, oh, folly, folly. In other words, in other words, that's BS. Where will, where will thy foolishness end? Into such measureless absurdities 
will men run? Right, you cannot measure that, right? God is everywhere. Okay? So that's foolishness according to the author. How are you going to walk with God when God's everywhere? When, when they are, let me, let me go back, into such absurd, into such measureless absurdities will men run. When they are, as we see them, too ignorant to give a rational meaning of their own language to us and too wicked to let us show the rational meaning of it to them. In other words, if you start showing people that this is astral theology and some of it is just so ridiculous that you know it cannot be real history, they want to lock you up. Right? They send the, the uh, de facto courts after you. Children and Family Services. Okay? They send the policy enforcers after you. They uh, seize your bank accounts when you start telling the truth. This is what the author is saying. When you start to what? When you start to tell the truth too. When you start to see and perceive. If it's an elephant, you see an elephant. You hear and understand. When the curse is broken and you start to speak the truth, well, the student is not greater than the master. Christ was the light of the world. And they sought to put his light out. Right, y'all? And they will do the same to you. That's why you got to outsmart them. You got to use your brain, your mind, rather. But see now how to all the definitions, even to the most apparently incongruous and, and contradictory definitions of this sacramental cup, answers this cup to the celestial sphere and thus. And we're going to stop here because there are 13, 13 that we need to go through. And uh, we've already been at it for two two hours and seven minutes. So let's stop here. We'll pick this back up on the next lecture. I'm Dr. Yusapa from Zion Law School. Thanks everyone for spending your time with me uh, tonight. If you're in North America, in Morocco, or wherever you are uh, on this earth plane. Much appreciated. I hope you learned something. Uh, I expect for you to use what you're learning. Otherwise, this is uh, all in vain if you don't use it. Okay, it's all in vain if you don't lose it. It's in one ear and out the other. Okay, uh, thanks for those of you who are sending in uh, support for my project to write the Book of the Law in Ancient Ivory Ath and Modern English to restore the astronomy astrology, to restore the natural law, natural phenomena, and the constitutional principles that are in the Book of the Law that are being hidden from you in the current uh, version, okay, the current English version. Thanks everyone for buying my books. If you uh, want to buy my books, buy them on zionlawschool.org. If you have any problem placing an order, let me know. Uh, because if something's wrong, I'll, I'll be the last person to know unless someone who buys a book sends me an email or a message letting me know that there was a problem. So that said, oh, everybody's invited on Saturday for the uh, 506 the Curses course that I teach. Uh, it's more of this, uh, but in greater detail because we're actually uh, looking in the scriptures and all of this stuff is buried. It's buried, okay? You'll never be able to find it unless you learn the skill sets that I'm teaching. And I guess other people are teaching it too, I don't know. Um, but anyway... Anyway, Islam to all the Moors and Shalom. I'll be back in about another 12 to 24 hours.